Before we get started modeling our shoe, I want to take you on a quick tour of some of the topology tools that we'll be using quite extensively on this project. So let's uh, jump over to the primitives area over here. I'll hit the control key and that's going to fire off a script that's going to generate a torus for us in about a one meter diameter. So uh, because this is a uh, polygon model, I'm going to hit shift tab to convert that to uh, Camel Clarks, as you can see. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and name this Taurus. Okay, now I can use the topology tools the t using uh, the toolbox here within the Moto tab and actually kind of set up a few other parameters uh, to optimize uh, topology modeling. However, I would prefer to go over to this topology tab here. And if you don't see the tab, just click this only button until all the tabs appear and uh, just click on topology. Now the interface is completely set up for you and it's optimized for use with the topology tools. Now you'll notice that our model here is very, very dark and that's because it's the foreground. Uh, it is the only, actually the only object that we have in our scene. So it is the active, active layer. And this is done so that you can actually see through the model to the object behind which you're retopologizing. So let's go ahead and create a new mesh. And we'll just click that there. You can also hit uh, N, the N button will also do that for you. And uh, notice all, all at once our uh, torus got lighter in shade so we can see it much more clearly. Now the torus is the background object or the inactive object and this blank or empty layer is our, our active layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the pen tool in the left panel there and I'm just going to click on top of my model here four times and it creates a quad. And that's all I need to do to get started. Now I'm going to jump over to the topology pen and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to mouse over an edge and you'll see that edge, the edge is pre-highlight when I mouse over them and I'm just going to click and drag and release the mouse button, click and drag again, release the mouse button. All the while I'm holding down the shift key while I'm doing this and any edge I drag over it drags out a new edge. It creates new geometry for me. Now if we look closely at this, that geometry is sitting on top of the torus. Now the spans between the vertices on the foreground object will probably fall beneath the, uh, the object that uh, you're using as a reference object below, simply because you don't have the same number of polygons uh, in the, in the uh, foreground object or the active object. So, um, but that's okay because uh, this process, you kind of rough in what you want your topology to be, and then you add edges as you go along. And uh, so if I mouse over a vertice, hold down the shift key and drag out, it will drag out a, an entire quad. Let's try that over here. And that drags out an entire quad. Now, if I hold down the shift key and right mouse click, it's going to create an entire row of edges there and a row of polygons, as you can see. So just remember that whenever you hold down the shift key and click, you're actually creating new geometry. Now, if you just want to adjust any of the polygons or components on the foreground object, um, all you have to do is click on, click and drag on them and they will adhere uh, to the background. They will stay constrained to the background. So not to worry. Now, um, depending upon what you mouse over is what you're going to move when you click and drag. And you can see it pre-highlights that. Now, if I want to move a whole edge, um, I simply uh, mouse over an edge and right click on it and it will move an entire edge loop for me. Now, suppose we want to delete some edges. Um, all we have to do is hold down the control key and middle mouse click on an edge or a vertice or a polygon. Whatever component you click on, if you're holding down the control key, that will uh, delete that component. Now be aware that when you delete edges, it still keeps the vertice there. So you have to be very aware that vertices are still 
present and may cause your polygons to have more than four sides. So just be aware of that. And you can always just select them and delete them. So those are the very basics of how to use this tool. And we'll get into some of these other features as we progress on our model.